Good afternoon ladies and gents and you join me outside Temple Church in London and you're going to be joining me on one of our little on foot tours. Uh, hope you're all going to enjoy. Down there are the graves of knights and very important people. When a knight, a carved stone knight, is shown on a grave, a way to tell if he went to the Crusades or not, or fought in the Crusades, is that a man that is, or has fought in the Crusades, his legs will be crossed at the ankles. That's the sign of a, cru a Crusader. So, yeah. little courtways and alleys were in the goldsmith building that will take you around to Falcon Chambers but we're going past the main porch or entrance into the church it's turning really cold again funny enough oh. whenever it turns cold my foot keeps hurting I don't know what's wrong with it and I have no wish to know either but yeah, there we go. We was on the inside of this one earlier. Um, I've done a nice tour of this church. I may break it down into parts and put it on the Instagram and TikTok. If not, I'll just share the link for it. But yeah, this is a hair court. And this is where all the lawyers' chambers and everything. Oh, it's very interesting. Ah, this is what um, Carol told me to look out for. One of my friends, one of my history friends. The hand statue, this is what she told me to come and see. I didn't notice it earlier. some kind we shall see what it is, is that, oh god it's in latin has no hospitium interis templi i have no idea i'm going to take a photograph of it yeah it's in latin anyway anyway right I'll point you up a minute because i don't wish to film people without their consent but yeah this is a nice little one of those tucked away London courtyards Carol from Barking told me to look out for this she said um go around there and she said all I'm gonna say to you is hands I was like okay she drops me these little hints every now <laughs> every now and then I'm quite lucky really with my places to go because I've got a retired cab driver father and uh, a keen historian who's also a church warden at Barking and it was her that got sort of kind of got me well known St Anne's in Limehouse just making sure no one's around sorry guys and girls yeah Farrah's buildings but yeah this is the lawyers chambers and everything it's a really historical and interesting area um, check the page out and you'll see a tour of the church inside um, that was brilliant. It's part one and part two, you see, because uh, part one is covering the main body of the church, and part two was really enjoyable, an organ recital, while we climbed up into the gallery, into that round dome up there. You can climb up there and you get a pretty good view, and the acoustics were amazing. But, yeah. Here's William, I think it's William Marshall, one of the, uh, the Knights Templar. There. Anyway, off we go. Oh, damn, aching like hell. Oh, well, that's closed now. I'll have to try and find out what that is. I think it's probably going to be some kind of guild or something like that. But there's lots of history and everything in this area. I don't know what this is, where it goes to, but where we're going to go to. And we shall see. 
pump court and entrance. This isn't the way I'm actually going to take us on our tour. I just wanted to have a look around around here. There's another one of the courts, but there's people there. And it hasn't got a pump by the looks of it anyway, and I don't wish to get lost. So we should be on our merry way. I hope everyone had a good Christmas and such like. And we're in another courtyard. Bicycles and such like. I love London. It's absolutely... You never ever tire of interesting things to see in London. Get the bikes out of the way. Schnapp. Pump court we are at the moment. Ah, this is it. There we are. Knew I'd seen it earlier. So called because of its water pump. Um, talking to water pumps, bear in mind, not today, but bear in mind the Allgate pump. I'll be visiting that soon. And it's a bit of not so jolly London history. I wonder if it moves. Oh, it does move a little bit, yeah. I'm not gonna go totally ballistic with it. Try and get a picture of it without the bin. That's better. We don't want rubbish bins in our photographs, do we, really? Right, let's point this way a minute, because someone's walking along. And we go back through here. This is the way I can't... Yeah, this is right. I believe. Lady very kindly told me where to go, because I did get a bit lost. And I was told, oh, it's a much easier route. You can go through straight through there. I was like, ah. Didn't know about that. <laughs> one of those um, little green things. I don't know if it was one of the London taxi cab uh, snack bar type affairs at one point or not. <clears throat> yeah, another pretty impressive building over here. All closed to the public. We're going to have a walk around here. Middle Temple Hall. That is, guys and girls. I'll wait till the gentlemen go and then I shall, that's better. And I shall get some pictures. There we go. That's better. You know, London's a, a jolly enough place, isn't it, I suppose? It's full of history. Got a nice water fountain over here. And I am completely unfamiliar to this area, so, or well, this bit. <coughs> Not so long ago, a year or longer ago, I wouldn't have done stuff like this because uh, I suffered, and still do to a degree, suffer from depression and anxiety. But my anxiety to a point a few years ago was so bad that I could not get lost without literally freaking out. So I'd never put myself in a situation where I could get lost. The fountain court we're in at the moment, guys and girls. Brilliant, brilliantly, the temple fountain sparkled in the sun and laughingly its liquid music played and merrily the idle drops of water danced and danced and peeping out and sport among the trees plunged lightly down to hide themselves. Martin Chuzzlewit and Charles Dickens. There we are. Some pictures. If you guys and girls the view, that's what I tell you. It always looks better when you and they when I got this phone, it did say for filming best results on times one zoom and I don't know why but that's how it works best. You get the best quality like that. I shan't argue with it. But yeah, this is Middle Temple Hall, which is obviously very historic in itself. Being careful not to fall into the water fountain, of course. 
put it in. Garden court. This would take you down. And look, just through there, my pretties, is the Thames. Let's point you up that way. Zoom in a bit. Oh, there we are. You can see the Thames through there and uh, the embankment. So that'll be a walk for another time. There we go. Right, off we go. Back up on our tour. Um, probably about a 30 minute one. Maybe a, maybe a smidge longer. I don't know. I'll walk behind the benches so I don't um, film people without their consent. Hopefully they're not like Foggy Dewhurst from uh, Last of the summer, I don't think I'm going to grow up them from behind. But yeah, and oh, it's a lovely building, really. You can tell that's Tudor, Tudor or Tudor esque, can't you? In its style. It's closed to the public today. Gentive Away Day Part 2, so off we go. Back down here. I'm just going to point you down a minute because there's some people coming along. Right. That is from whence we have come. We go back round this way and we could go straight through and on to the Thames, but that's not what we're going to do today. That's not what we're going to do at all. One Plowden buildings, and it's got a nice little feature above its doorway. Oh, there's a bike coming. I can zoom in on pretty well from here. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. There we are. Look. Along now. There we go. That's interesting, isn't it? But he's coming back round now. As I say, the architecture and, and such is everywhere in London. Everywhere. <clears throat> and this is the way I came. I could have gone a much easier route, which I didn't know about, I must admit. Should have just asked my dad, really. But the thing is with that as well, they've changed so much of the roads and layouts of London now, and he's been retired for a good 10, 15 years, so... The Inner Temple Garden, open now as usual, that's for the, the lawyers and such like and people to enjoy. Anyone come, in, come to fancy uh, rubbing some fiery Jack Rabbin ointment into my foot? It damn well needs it. Cotton grass, whatever it is, I wouldn't want to go near that with an open flame. Shall we have a stroll around the inner temple gardens? Shall we, my dears? Shall we? Okay. And you got the lovely sundial, and it looks right out onto the Thames. Oh, look. Let's zoom in quickly. Did you see that? I think that was a little blue tick. There it is, there it is. Oh look, that's lovely. How charming. And how quintessentially English. There you've got a sundial there. Middle. Perfect. It's roped off, but you, once upon a time you could go down them stairs and you could walk all the way around in a temple garden, which I'm probably not going to do because it's rather large and there are other bits I want to take you to, so I'll walk up to the end here and get some nice photos like that then. 
as you see. We'll cover all of this one day, um, well, soon. This, this lot is all on my to-do list, obviously in nicer weather. As uh, Alistair Sims in Ebenezer Scrooge said, to the man that owed him 20 pounds and couldn't pay it, I'm not in the business of conducting my business in the teeth of inclement weather. And that's the back side of that hall there. As I say, um, very, very historical area. So we've seen the Temple Church, which you can just, oh, I could have gone through that way as well. So there's so many little, um, look at that, that's lovely. There's so many areas and bits and bobs in London that you can go and quite easily get lost. That's nice. That looked very nice in the evening, always get out the road. along the edge and then I'm off to uh, the church of St Mary Le Strand and if it's open they did say it was back open on the 9th so that's another one to be ticked off my list but this little walk takes us around here and will take us on to Fleet Street and that is where we're going to go but this is what I wanted to show you all the old buildings of this area the temple and the inner temple and temple bar and all that business and this is the paper buildings so called because there is all the paperwork and business done there but you've got another little uh, the tour just going past of group S several people have suggested to me you should uh, you should do two as like of groups of people, but I'm a natural introvert by by heart. With the phone here, it's different. It's just me and this phone, and you guys comfortably, hopefully comfortably, and happy in your homes watching the video. And it's a hobby for me, really. So we'll see what the future brings. of that without the car in it that's it architecture in this bit in this area is absolutely spectacular it's you can see like just by this one here and this is all, all the old Georgian houses and such like and it's where all the lawyers and everything lived and worked from a lot of them so yeah you would have had to have been quite well off to live here back in the day you've got a nice coat of arms over here Look, although they're uh, electric now they were gas lit at one point and been very well converted into electric but this is the little things I like in London stuff like this Schnip. and the gully there where would have all the, the midden waste would have run in its day because don't forget when these places went up they, did, they didn't have big open running sewers and a big sewer network like what we've got nothing like such it would have been quite smelly around here rich and smelly that's the one thing about the olden days we're at King's Bench Walk by the way um, that's the one thing about the olden days whether you were rich or poor you couldn't escape from the disease and the dirt you really just couldn't even the wealthiest beds were flea ridden. That's what like, you had the royal flea catcher. It was a it was a real person, and he'd uh, bring along great big, fresh, warm sheep fleeces with all the lanolin in, and the sheep would uh, the fleas would jump from the bed into that, <laughs> and they'd club them to death. Another thing, and this was um, King Charles II was quite familiar with this one that you would have dogs all about you in the hope that the fleas would go to the dogs rather than you. And King Charles II never died of the plague, or caught the plague, so it might have been absolutely rampant with venereal diseases, but that's a story for another time. Oh, wait, 19 minutes, that's not bad. 
I'll be on Fleet Street soon. That's just where we've come from over there. The alternation offices over there, whatever they are. Take a snip of that. Sorry about the sniffing, I'm not a cocaine fiend, it's just very cold. And I've not long just got over sinusitis as well, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was the Christmas itself was quite nice, it was quite pleasant enough and quiet and pleasant, which is what I like. But I must say the uh, the, the aftermath of it wasn't wasn't so great. Ended up all of us ended up ill, myself, my parents, uh, a couple of other people in my family. So it got tested and whatnot and it wasn't the the dreaded sea as they say, you know, COVID. Sinusitis, apparently. We thank you for not smoking in this area. That's all right. You're quite welcome. I think my fingers are too cold to smoke at the moment. I think I'm going the right way. Yes. I think so. And this should take us out onto Fleet Street. By the grace of God. Some of these little back streets and things can be all right. Some of them can be very dodgy. advise ladies to come around here on their own unless they're into martial arts and self-defense and such like I'm not being a chauvinist it's just uh, London is not the safest of areas my friends right there we are St Dunstan's in the west and up there is the uh, which we should hear ring in a minute hopefully I don't know if it's uh, probably already done it, I think. The clock there is uh, Gog and Magog, the allegorical figures of London, ancient times. There we are. It's Gog and Magog. And this clock, and they strike the bells every quarter hour. Ding dong fashion. this church not long ago if you search around about Christmas time you'll see this church and the church of St Clement Danes so, yeah. I've still got um, a couple of bits to do in St Clement Danes though the upper galleries and uh, da -da 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 -da, the crypt and this I am told yeah it is yeah it would do that would take you right through to where I was so and here we've got the uh, in the London courts it's going to point you down a minute because there's a lot of people at the bus stop there we are I don't like filming with people without their consent it's not fair Barclays Bank. And we're coming up to Prince Henry's room, which is a very, very historical building. And this is where I could have, should have gone through Temple Church. So I knew for next time. But yeah, Prince Henry's room. It's this very, very historical structure above there, and that takes you right through to the temple church look there was right yeah straight through there so anyone that's on Fleet Street go through here these great gates I'm gonna cross over so I shall pause you a minute 
And there we are. Historical information about Prince Henry's room will feature in our video. Now we need to cross over without... Ah, the green man is on. That's excellent. Without getting ourselves killed. Pref oh shit, my ankle. Dash it all and it broke my bloody ankles then. There we are. And with the... Uh, the magic of magic eraser. Oh, straight over the road, someone's coming over. Let's silversmith. Oh look, George Attenborough. Obviously, it may not be because it's a common enough name, but it makes you wonder if it's any relation to David Attenborough. And what you can see there in the middle, the spire of, is the Church of St Clement Danes. And we're coming up to the Inner London Crown Courts, not the Inner London Royal Courts. The, um, oh, you've got the nice telephone boxes there. A lot of people like these. The Bells of St Clement Danes. If you can be here at six o'clock in the evening, you'll be part of the nursery mime of oranges and lemons, said the Bells of St Clement, because that chimes out at six o'clock every evening, so I'm told. stood here then because that's gonna bug me. I need to check that. Oh for God's sake, something formerly stood here. Oh, I'll check it out another time. It's starting to split my brain so Couldn't leave it, it was going to bug me. Temple Bar. He seems happy enough. point out too much at the moment because I will get my phone lens rained on and it's been clinked this morning. <clears throat> there we are. get those photos in between the cars going by and such like but yeah it's it's, uh, it's a brutalistically historical area this one I should be careful with really standing by the road like that with my phone because I could get that snatched which would be Extremely upsetting. <laughs> right, oh, and we're in the uh, parish of St. Martin's in the fields. There we are, so to speak. Zoom out from that. There. And I think I have been rained on because I've got a little bit of a smear in the corner. But yeah, I'm going to walk along here so I don't film too many people, hopefully. 
but we're coming up to the uh, that pub I went to recently there you have the London criminal courts here all the big boy stuff look that's where the uh, prison van is there and pray you to God you never the George that's it and pray to God you never end up there on the wrong side of it <laughs> definitely be good boys and girls all of you and I shall try and do the same Is, look, the Royal Courts of Justice, where justice and injustice is served in equal measure, my friends, so they say. <laughs> and I'm gonna, what are we? Oh, we're only 31 minutes, that's not bad. If you want to go up here, well, you will have to flee, because they have closed all the public conveniences in London now, most of them which is exceptionally inconvenient and a good way to make money when they find you peeing in the street but we are going to go here and I think we should end our tour here what time are we? ah excellent Samuel Johnson L LD critic essayist Philosoph oh God, philicist, biographer, wit, poet, moralist, dramatist, political writer, and what's that? A talker. Oh, there we are. Born 1709, died 1784. The gift and handiwork of Percy Fitzgerald, FSA, and erected by the Reverend S. Pennington, M.A., rector to St. Clement Danes, 1910. Because St. Clement Danes is where Samuel Johnson worshipped. That was his parish in London. It's raining, it's pouring. Well, it ain't raining and pouring, but it is somewhat wet. I made a considered effort to cheer myself up today because getting into that kind of thing is not good for you or anyone else around you I can assure you of that RAF Church of St Clement Danes we're getting the daytime views last time I was here and it was lucky because you may not see that view again it was a nighttime one and there was a van over the road in memory so I'll read this first in memory of squadron reader Ralph Reader, CBE, 1903 to 1982. Officer, commanding the Royal Air Force gang shows, 1939 to 46. Presented by members of the Royal Air Force Gang Show Association, 27th of May, 1984. Sorry if you can't see it that well, because it is a bit rainy. Has this one got one on? No. Is there a side one round here? We shall see. No, no, there's just one there. That's unsymmetrical. That's irritating, isn't it? So, yeah. um, as I was saying, last time I was here at this church, got some lovely nighttime views, and just where this cab is here, there was a uh, a van truck type thing that puts goes around London putting posters up. I've seen it quite a bit. And it was, it's very colourful, it flashes different colours every five minutes or so. And the, it was right here and the colour of it lit up the church. And it's the first time I've ever seen the church look like that and it may well be the last. The well underneath, 190 feet deep and containing 150 foot of water was sunk and this pump erected at the expense of the parish of St Clement Danes, H Essex, William Robinson, Church Wardens, 1807. So, under here is a well, 191 foot deep. And I'm going to deliberately walk us around this way. We're coming up to the Strand. Uh, 
which has been made thoroughly inconvenient for traffic. They've tried to um, turn it into a pedestrian only area, the Strand. Which, uh, well, there you are. St. Clement Danes, built by the Danish community in the 9th century and rebuilt by William the Conqueror. Built again by Sir Christopher Wren in 1681. The steeple added by James Gibbs in 1719. Gutted by German incendiary bombs, leaving only the damaged walls and steeple on May the 10th, 1941 AD. Adopted, sorry, in 19... Sorry, <laughs> adopted in 1956 by the Royal Air Force. Restored by Anthony Lloyd and re-consecrated in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, 19th of October 1958, as the Central Church of the Royal Air Force. So basically, as, as that says, this is the spiritual home, really, central spiritual home in London of the Royal Air Force. And we should be able to enjoy something in a minute. Here we go. There we are, that was the three o'clock bells of St. Clement Danes. So, yeah, get on 37 minutes long, or we've gone a little bit over, so I'll have to YouTube this one, guys and girls. Uh, hope you all found the little tour interesting. If you did, please give it a like and a share. Ah! Oh. Ah, brilliant! Well, I know I went over my... Uh...
Well, that's what I was going to say. As I was going to say, I know my tour is a bit, a, a bit longer than the usual ones, but it was a bit more to take in today, and we caught this as well, so... if that's it or not yep hope you all enjoyed and uh, if you did give it a like and a share if not well there we are take care everyone wish you all well and uh, hope everyone's having a good new year so far take care all the best everyone thanks for watching